Hi, I'm Tony. Welcome to Sports Bike Shop's video about the Bell SRT helmet. This is Bell's street helmet that offers a fiberglass shell for a price that you'd more normally associate with a plastic shelled helmet. The SRT weighs in on our scales at under 1500 grams. It's 1487 grams to be exact. And that's pretty damn good for a helmet with the recommended retail price of £169.99 as we record this. This is the sort of helmet where previous year's paint schemes are also frequently discounted. So there's often the chance to pick one up for even less than that. Part of the reason the SRT is light is that it's actually pretty simple and straightforward. There's no internal sun visor or any fancy dannery to bump up the weight. That fiberglass shell has a comprehensive venting system through it with inlets at the chin, the forehead, and also on top of the helmet. The chin vent operates on a slider with air flowing up through the chin bar and out by the breath guard to make sure that you can get some air on the inside there. There's a similar arrangement here on the forehead where this shutter reveals these two slash cut vents that pull air all the way through to the interior. And then the top vent is a chunky switch that opens up a hole at the front just here to allow air to come right through to the inside again. Once that air is on the inside of the helmet, there are channels in the impact liner which allow it to circulate towards the back of the helmet where there are twin exits for it to disappear out into the atmosphere. The venting on this helmet works well in my experience and those vents are all really easy to use with chunky sliders at all the locations and there's nothing fiddly to mess about with. The visor itself has one of the fastest changing mechanisms around. You push this button on the side, pull the visor forward and it's off and then it just pushes back into place, push back and then it clicks back on again. It took me about 12 seconds to remove and replace the whole visor and that was with the benefit of just a couple of practice runs before I set the stopwatch running. It has a central lifting and locking tab, which is becoming much more popular across the range for helmets now. The base plates don't allow the visor to be half open though. Once you start to lower it, the visor will naturally fall until it's here, open by a couple of inches or so. In this position, there's actually a strong flow of air to the inside of the lid. You can then push the visor down until the tab at the bottom there clicks in place to lock it on the chin bar. But what I found is there's actually enough natural resistance in that movement just at the end there to keep the visor open by a very small amount if that's what you prefer. The visor has a coating on the inside to resist fogging and I found that was actually quite effective in the time I wore this helmet. It doesn't have the same protective power as a pin lock, but in general riding on dry days and very chilly damp mornings, I found that coating did an okay job. As I said earlier, there's no internal sun visor and because there are no pin lock pins, you can't attach a tinted insert to this visor either. That leaves you with two options on bright sunny days. You can either wear sunglasses or you can swap from a clear visor to a tinted one. Strictly speaking, that's illegal on the road, although we hardly ever hear of anyone now who's stopped while they're using a dark visor sensibly. And by sensibly, we mean not using one at night. One thing though to bear in mind with this helmet is that visors cost more than the norm, which is probably down to that anti-fog coating that's on there. If you wanted a tinted visor for this helmet, then it costs £82.99. And it's the same if you find yourself needing to replace the clear visor, the price is just the same. So moving to the inside, the lining is simple, but it's comfortable and the internal shape is also slightly different to the sportier Bell helmets that I've been trying for these video reviews. The SRT is listed as having an intermediate oval head shape, but it also suits my round shaped head quite well. And it fits my head better than the star range of helmets, which were a little bit too narrow for it. There are recesses behind the cheek pads that give room for intercom speakers. And I was able to easily fit a Cardo Pack Talk Bold system into this helmet. Equally, I see no issues fitting a center system either because the speakers on center have actually got a smaller diameter and they would fit just as easily in those recesses. The cheek padding to this helmet ends just below the temples here, which is deliberate on Bell's part to give spectacle wearers room to get the arms for their glasses just in there. The strap fastener is a micrometric buckle, and that is something that comes up in the customer reviews for this helmet. It seems that quite a few riders would prefer a traditional D-ring setup over this buckle. This is the more usual type of fastener you find on sub 200 pound helmets though. So speaking of those customer reviews, owners are largely very positive about their SRTs. Of the 43 people who've posted a review as we record this, 34 of them gave the helmet the maximum five stars out of five. There's quite a bit of praise from customers for the wind noise levels, and I also found this helmet quite quiet, but 
these things always vary by the bike, the rider and the riding style. So I wouldn't take it as absolutely guaranteed that this helmet will be quiet. And there are some individual customer reviews who say this helmet's noisy. So it's always a bit of a gamble on the noise levels you'll experience when you get out and use it on your own bike. Of the people who gave this helmet less than five stars, the most common issues are either that noise that we spoke about or the fact that they would prefer a D-ring fastener for the strap. Personally, I found the SRT a bit of a surprise. It's a decent helmet that's comfortable for my head shape. It comes from a respected manufacturer and it's really well priced for what you get. The only real downside for me is the cost of an additional visor or for replacing one should you ever need to. So before I wrap up, let's cover sizing and approvals for this helmet. The SRT comes in sizes extra small to double extra large, and there are three shell sizes. The smallest covers lid sizes extra small and small. There's a shell that covers just medium and large size helmets, and then the biggest shell size covers extra large and above. It's approved to ECE 2205 for the road and is also ACU Gold approved, so it can be used on track days and for racing. It's not yet tested under the UK government's SHARP scheme, so I can't tell you how well it has performed in their impact tests. So that's it. I hope that tells you everything you wanted to know about the Bell SRT helmet. But if there is anything you'd like to ask or to add, please pop a comment below. Thanks for watching.